Thank you again for joining me here as we consider the book of Proverbs, the Old Testament book of God's wisdom. We are right now in Proverbs chapter number 3. Last time we read through Proverbs chapter 3 verse 20. So we're going to pick up right in verse 21 and read down through verse number 26 here, Proverbs chapter number 3. And verse 21 reads, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of, desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. And so Proverbs, uh, Solomon again Speaking to his son here in Proverbs and extolling the benefits of having wisdom, he starts out by saying, keep them, so we know that he's uh, furthering the thought that we finished with last time. He's been talking about wisdom, he's been talking about instruction, he's been talking about knowledge and understanding, and we've gone over those, but real quickly, knowledge is knowing what is right and what is good. Wisdom, knowing how to do what is right and how to put into practice that which is good. And then understanding, being able to know why we do what it is we do. And so Solomon's continuing this thought of the virtues of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And they cannot be overstated. God created the world and put everything into place by his knowledge, by his wisdom, by his understanding. And so the world moves and exists and consists because of those things. Through studying the world, we can see God's knowledge. We can see his wisdom and understanding in it and increase our own. But then it comes to when it comes to the spiritual, we have to look to the Lord's revelation of those things. And we find that in his word, in the scriptures. The scriptures are the sufficient revelation that we have from God to explain to us what it is God wants us to know about this life. And so here Solomon is reminding his son just the value of those things. But I want to bring in a word that I mentioned before. It's already been mentioned a couple of times, but I want to really focusing on that word today as we look at this passage, and that's verse 1, the word discretion. I'm sorry, verse 21, the first verse we looked at. Here, Proverbs 3, 21 says, My son, let not them, speaking of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Now, discretion, I mentioned that before in one of the lessons, that discretion is not the ability to determine what is right and wrong, but rather it is the ability to judge that which is good versus that which may not be so good. And um, discretion, the word, uh, it comes from the idea of being able to make correct separations and judgments. And uh, I think I've mentioned, uh, you know, a person who walks in simplicity lacks the discretion or the ability to see the nuance between one thing and another. And they miss uh, sort of what it is that separates one thing from being good and another thing from being bad. And that is one part of discretion. But the levels of discretion, if you look at discretion, we can consider it, it is being able to discern that which is right and that which is good, that which is good for us. Um, in life, we have many choices that are placed before us. Uh, sometimes, sometimes those choices are between something that is right and something that is wrong, and uh, wisdom will teach us to choose that which is right, okay, over that which is wrong. God's word tells us, adjures us, it exhorts us to do what is right over what is wrong. But then there are times in life where we're not faced with a decision between what is right and wrong, but we're faced with decisions of what is good. What is good? So we may be faced with something that is good and another thing that is good, but one of those things is better than the other. We may be faced with things that are not necessarily wrong or sinful in our life, but yet still should be left out of our life because they are not the best thing for us. Um, um, so discretion helps us differentiate or make a separation or a judgment between things that are good over things that may not be so good. When I think of that, I think of several things of illustration wise, you know, um, oftentimes we're told to avoid certain types of people. Uh, we're told to avoid people that are foolish. We're told in the Bible to avoid people who are wicked. We're told in the Bible to avoid people who are scornful or very critical uh, of others. And 
and critical of that which is right. And we're told to avoid uh, uh, people uh, that that will drag us down. Okay, a companion of fools, the Bible said, shall be destroyed. And so we know that there's a difference between right and wrong. But then sometimes it's not so much. Sometimes there are people that maybe we ought to uh, put set some boundaries in our life because walking with them may not necessarily be bad or sinful, but they may just tie up our time such that we can't do that which is good in the sight of God. Okay, and maybe they're maybe they're caught up very much in the things of this world. Maybe their um, their affections are not set on the things of God, but they're set on things of this life. And that though they don't pull us off into sinful activities or drag us down in sinful ways, uh, they consume our time and keep us from doing what it is God would have us to do. So it's not necessarily that they are doing things that are wrong, but there's a greater good that we could be doing. It's the same thing with entertainment. And one of the questions that's often asked about entertainment, whether it be mu- music, movies, books, or any type of thing, is what's wrong with and then you can fill in the blank. What's wrong with that movie? What's wrong with that music? What's wrong with that activity? Or what's wrong with that? Or what's wrong with sports? Or what's wrong with this? Or what's wrong with that? Oftentimes, it's not a matter of what's wrong with it, but it is the sense of it not being as good as what something else could be. That's not to say we should never be involved with sports, never should watch a movie, never listen to any type of, enter, do any type of entertainment, or, or get involved with any type of of, of music that is not hymns or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is discretion helps us differentiate between what types of good there are. There are some things that are just not wrong, but there are things that may be better than the things that are not necessarily wrong or sinful. And so discretion helps me make decisions between not necessarily right and wrong, but between what is good and bad or what is good and better. And as a Christian, I want to take the better path rather than just the path that I may not see as being the wrong path. Say, well, I don't want to do the wrong thing. Well, I also want to do the right thing as well. And so he says here in verse 21, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. And of course, the idea of life unto thy soul doesn't say life unto thy body or life as far as living longer. What he's talking about there is it gives us the benefits of enjoying the fruitful life that God wants us to have. Uh, You know, life to your soul. Um, Jesus said he came to give us a life and that we might have it more abundantly. And so I want to, to be able to differentiate between things that may not necessarily be right and wrong to choose the better path so that my soul will be able to appreciate and have the benefits of this life uh, more so than if I was to walk a path that may be not as good as the other. Uh, Verse 23, Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. What a wonderful, wonderful passage that is. Um, have you ever struggled with uh, disturbance of sleep? Has there been so much on your mind and so much stress under which you are? Or maybe maybe there's guilt in your life that has prevented you from being able to rest peacefully? The Bible says that, uh, that, that the wicked in this life find no rest whatsoever. Well, here we're being told how we can enjoy a restful life and a peaceful life. And that is to be able to walk in wisdom and discretion, being able to differentiate between that which is good and that which is better, or that which is best for us. Uh, Then he tells us here in verse 25 and verse 26, and this kind of goes along with it, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. This is a theme that we see over and over, not just in Proverbs, but throughout the whole Bible. And that theme is this, that in the end, or at some point, those who follow wicked paths will meet their justice and will meet up with the judgment of God. That is just a theme that is that is rooted into not only natural law and the way the world functions, because it is designed by God, but that is rooted into God's character. The wicked shall receive, as the Bible says, their reward 
and the reward is not a good one. Okay, it's not something we want to receive. Um, but the wicked will one day get what it is that is coming to them. Now we may say, well, I never see that happen in this life. Well, let me tell you, this life isn't all there is. For some, this life is the best life they're ever going to have because the life in eternity afterwards is not going to be good for them. You know, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And those who reject Christ, though they may benefit much in this life and have all that this life has to offer, will have lost it all as well as losing their eternal soul. Jesus asked the question, what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? We don't want to be on that side. But at the same time, those that live wickedly in this life oftentimes see it come upon them long before they ever pass from this life. I'm reminded of many people, many people, uh, even in recent history, let alone ancient history or past history, that have lived it up and enjoyed it, the benefits of their wickedness in this life, and yet maybe they enjoy it for years, maybe they enjoy it for decades. They may go 20, 30, 40 years, and it seems like nothing bad ever happens to them, but someday it does catch up to them, and at the end of their life, they are in a state of remorse and regret and sorrow and everything that they've worked so hard to obtain in this life is taken away from them because of their wickedness. God tells us, don't be afraid when it happens and don't be startled. Don't be shocked. Okay. Don't let it shake you up when you see the wicked judged by God because God is your confidence. He will keep you from falling in that same path if you are walking according to his righteousness you're walking a life according to his wisdom, if you're using your discretion to make good godly judgments in your life that lead you on good paths in your life, then you don't have to be afraid of that coming upon you in this life or in the life to come, of God's judgment coming upon you. You may be condemned by man, you may be uh, ca cast out by man, they may, they may, they may uh, shame you, or try to shame you or, or push you out of society, but it, the, the judgment of the Lord will not fall on you. You know, one of the most, uh, I love reading Psalms, and some of the most interesting Psalms are the ones where the psalmist or David will write, and he'll say, Lord, how come the wicked prosper in this world? And how come they have so much? Is I'm a godly person, I'm struggling, I'm trying to make it through, and it seems like the wicked have so much going for them as far as family's concerned, as far as money is concerned, and as far as uh, promotion is concerned. How come they have so much, and I have so little of it? And a psalm always comes around to say this, but yea, I considered it and realized that God hath set them in slippery places. God hath set them in slippery places. Sometimes God allows the wicked to be prosper in this world so that when their fall comes, it's a great fall and others may see it and fear. God hath placed them in slippery places. Judgment is coming. So I exhort you, I encourage you to walk according to the wisdom of God. Allow God's wisdom to guide and direct you. Say, well, how do I get that wisdom? Well, I've been saying it. It's found within the Bible. It's found in the words of the scripture. And as you take it in and open your heart to the words of scripture, allow it to be your guide, you will find that the wisdom of God will flow into you and it will be a part of your way of thinking and your decision making. And as it does, you'll be able to increase in discretion which is the ability not always to, yes, we want to make decisions between what's right and wrong and do what is right, but be able to differentiate between what is good, what is better, and what is best. Because there are some good things in life which aren't quite as good as what the best things are that God has for us. You know, God gives us good things. And sometimes he wants us to take those good things and let go of them for better things. And that's what discretion helps us to do. To differentiate between, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. Instead of asking what's wrong with that, here's a better question to ask. What's good about it? What's right about it? And is there something better? We may say, well, it's not nearly bad or sinful. Sure. But is it the best? And is it good? And then to not be afraid when the desolation of the wicked comes upon them suddenly, and often it does, just out of nowhere, takes them in a snare, in a net, and, and, and God's judgment falls, hey, that's okay. That is God doing as the Bible tells us he does over and over again and judging in righteousness. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you. 
God bless you. Hope to see you all very soon. And we love you and are praying for you. Take care.